Hello there, this is a tutorial for a procedural revolve or a screw modifier as we have it here. It's very simple to do in geometry nodes and when we start with a curve like this which is exactly in the Y plane uh, with a starting point at zero we can see here the, the curve points that you can also uh, adjust uh, what we actually need is a curve circle and we need a, a curve to mesh. If we connect them, we need the curve to go into the curve profile, the curve circle into the curve, and we also want to see what we're doing. So we take a join geometry and then plug in also our curve. So we see it here. We see that it's not correct yet. And that's because the orientation of our curve is not right. We need to rotate it 90 uh, degrees. And if we go in here, we see our curve and this is the revolve. We need to set the radius of the circle to very small. I set it to 0, 0, 0, 1 and now the curve and the revolve overlap exactly. So if we see here we have the curve line that we've drawn and here we have the revolve. So we can see if we grab the point that it uh, shapes it directly. We can change the curves. We can also add more curve points to create some kind of phase. So this way it uh, becomes really easy to create revolved objects. And what we can do is if we go into mesh mode, we can plug in the resolution and we can set the resolution. We can also go into a resample curve. We can plug that one in and make it into a parameter. And then we also have control over both of the uh, edge loops going from top to bottom and uh, the horizontal ones if we want to make low poly models or high poly models. We also have a little bit of a problem because we need to UV unwrap this, uh, this thing and we have uh, intersecting UVs. So if we go into shading, let's go into object. We go to our object here, make a material, call it uh, vase, oops, caps lock, vase. This is a vase material. We are going to set it here, set material, plug it in, set vase. And then here the materials on. We also have to make a uh, image texture. Plugging that in, new. We take the color grid. And now nothing shows up. We need to also make an attribute. No, an attribute. There we go with a vector that we plug in. We call this base UV and then here also we need to store that vase UV um, I need to store store named attribute we're going to store a vector and we call this one also vase UV and what you can do is you can take the curve circle and the curve that you've drawn and take the parameters, the spline parameters. And with the spline parameters, you can create the UVs. So if we go in and say combine, plug that one into the value, and then take a capture attribute for both of your splines and connect the factor and connect them to X and Y. There we have our UV map. And here you see that it's flipped. 
So we need to take a vector math node, put it to multiply, set them all to one, and then in the x we flip it to minus one. And now it's correct. But what we see here is that we have the, because it is a loop, like the first index is also the last index. So when it wants to go to the end, it actually goes all the way back. That's why you see all these colors. The whole texture is uh, squashed in here. And there's a solution on how to fix this. What I tried first is uh, instead of circle, creating an, an arc. Or you can also, for example, do this. Uh, set spline cyclic. Then you solve it, but you have to uh, fix this gap. And that's kind of a weird problem. So I uh, found, found another way to do this, which actually a bit, little bit simpler. Um, what you can do is when we go here, make some space, we can set the position of all the geometry. And let me show you with a mix node. Um, set this to vector, go into here, set the position. Yeah, I found it mostly it works with color. If we say color, set the position, set this one to white, no, black. We have here the position. No, it shouldn't be black. It should be the position. So the initial initial position of the vase. We can interpolate between the vase and the UV space. So here we see what happens. Uh, here the last row is not going to the end point of one, but it goes back to zero. That's why you see this intersection here. Also, if we go back, you see that there's another face here, which has all the colors of the whole texture. So if we go here, we are going to fix this in the UV positions and then form it back to the face. So we need a little bit more space here. We first have to split uh, the faces because it's connected. I need to capture an index. So if we go and capture, we are going to capture the index, the first index. So we type index. We don't need a float. We need an in integer. We need the first index of the circle. So if we have the circle here, which is this one, which is super small, so we cannot see it. It's right over here. The first index of this circle will take all these points of the line that we drawn. So if we say uh, compare, then we take the index, we say an integer, you know, connect it again and say equal to zero. Zero is the first index of the circle. And then connect it to the split edges. Now the face is split in exactly the point where my line is. So now I can reposition the UVs back to uh, where they supposed to start or end. So let's do that. So if we go now to set position, we can give it an offset, but now we offset them all. We need to offset only the last row. So we take another compare node. And then we say less than, less than the count. Plug that in. And now we get nothing. 
So what we need is a less than the index. So we need another index. We plug that one in here and then the count. And there we have it. Here you see that the strip that was going back all the way is now folded out all the way. And you can set that one to one. So it will always go uh, to the end. And also this is correct now. As you can see, if we mute this one, now it goes back. Uh, you cannot see it because there's no intersecting uh, lines, but this is supposed to be correct. If we go here, we see that the UV is still not correct. So we should actually capture a vector with the position of how uh, this face is laid out here. So if we take this, then plug it into our store named attribute, we see that if we fix now the UV map. It gives ourselves a little bit more space here. And then we do another set position. Now we can set it back to the original position. So if we take a viewer node, viewer node, plug in the split edge. Here, there's the shape of the vase. We need another capture attribute. Plug it in here. Oops, that's the wrong line. Capture, put it in here. Take another position. We will make this into a vector. Capture the Capture the position, all the vertices of where the vase is. Delete this one. And now we can set the position of the vase. And we have an offset, but we copied also, but we need it to be at zero. And now we fixed the UVs. And UVs are also the right side up. Yes, yeah, so what we can do finally, if we take the subsurface uh no subdivide surface here we can see that it's not connected yet we can set this to merge and we merge them together and make sure that this is set to face corner because if you set it to point the problem is back if you set it to face corner it knows that it needs to keep the the data the same so this way you have a perfectly UV unwrapped face that you can uh, change with the curves. You have full control, adding more curves. And you have the UVs that you can use. You can also, if you want to control, put another UV vector math node here, change it to add and then set them all to zero and you can for example change the orientation you can also do this in the shader editor where you have control with the mapping so if we go here this is the factors that come out we use a mapping and here we have also the control to rotate it's a bit weird maybe the z yeah you see we have the rotate we have the location where we can change where it starts and we have the scaling if we need to uh, add a little bit more of our textures in, if you have a pattern or something. So I hope this is uh, helpful and you can build your own revolving structures.